Hi, good morning from Las Vegas. Gotta get a breakfast sandwich. Sun's out, Bun's out is one of my go-to breakfast places because they'll serve anything at six in the morning. I like this short rib sandwich with egg, potato, latke, on a brioche bun. Super buttery bun. I had the sandwich last time. I just remember how the short rib was so juicy. There's chilies in here as well. The egg is nice and gooey. Caramelized onions too. Mm. Oh, that juice is exploded all over. Today is gonna be a food hot day. And before heading out, I just wanna give a big thank you and shout out to the sponsor of this video, Surfshark VPN. I've been talking about and using Surfshark VPN for years now. And it's something I highly, highly, highly recommend to everyone out there. Nowadays, so much of our personal information is online and pretty much wherever we go, we're connected to all sorts of random hotspots like here in this hotel, at restaurants, cafes, airports. And most of the time, these hotspots are not secure. There's even a message that will pop up telling you that the hotspot is not very secure. And these are great ways for people to gain access to your private information. And these people could range from data, aggregators who are getting your information to, to sell to marketing companies or even more sinister stuff like someone can gain access to your IP and obtain your live location which happened to somebody I know it's scary stuff so what a VPN is is a virtual private network and what Surfshark VPN does is that it encrypts and secures your personal information before it goes over the internet so people who you don't want having access to your private info like your IP address they're not gonna get access to it Surfshark also has something called Surfshark alerts so when someone's trying to gain access to something like your email you're gonna get notified right away also on the internet Entertainment side. If you want to check out what Netflix catalogs look like in other countries, you can actually use Surfshark VPN to change your location to another country, or you can check out their shows and movies. Or if you're traveling abroad, you want access to your US streaming services. Like I watch a lot of Blue Bloods, anime. The Devil's a Part Timer season two is out. Oh, so is Demon Slayer. Anyway, you can use Surfshark VPN to change your location to the US, so you gain access to those streaming services as well. And I talked about this before. When you're traveling abroad, a lot of US major websites they don't even work. So I use Surfshark VPN just to do basic stuff like paying my bills. So if you want to give this a try, go to my link down below. Use my promo code Mikey. You get 83% off your order, plus three months for free, plus try it out for 30 days. If you don't like it for any reason, get your money back. All right, I'm going to go get a workout in, and this is going to be a pretty amazing food day. Breakfast is going to be all-you-can-eat paella buffet. So this is a really interesting place. I am at the Tres Cazuelas restaurant. They have a Sunday brunch every week that serves all you can eat paella and it's being made right in front of me right now. So the chef is using all fresh seafood. There's clams in there, mussels, calamari, Spanish saffron. Also they add in their homemade seafood stock, olive oil of course, chicken and pork belly and giant prawns. I don't think I've seen prawns this big in a paella before. And also pork belly, since it takes 45 minutes for the paella to, to cook, got some other things from the menu. Ciabatta bread with a side of blue cheese of mussels. That deserves a round of applause. Huge, juicy, plump mussels. This Gucci sauce is incredible. I'm gonna scoop some of that up. It's cheesy, it's creamy, it's got that nice little bit of blue cheese funk. I can tell right away how fresh those mussels are. They're definitely not the typical little mussels you see in some, what is a clam? Ciabatta bread, butter, and garlic inside. Dunk that right into the blue cheese sauce. Mm. Holy crap. I know I came for the paella, but wow. There's some next level mussels. It's garlicky, it's spicy, that's so awesome. Also, they recommended this. These are dates wrapped with Iberico bacon. Look at that, crispy bacon swirling around the dates. And there's an almond inside. Mm. Also crumbles of blue cheese as well. There's some balsamic vinegar. This is a massive piece. The bacon is deliciously crispy. Dates toasted, nicely sweet. Almonds, of course, brings that nice nutty flavor. Just gotta watch out for the pit of the date. I can use that with an almond and bit down. Just be a little careful, but this is something I never had before. Mm. The balsamic vinegar offsets the fattiness of the bacon. The bacon is just phenomenal. Crispy, clean, porky flavor in that savory and sweet contrast. These are both musket dishes. Oh, and before the paella is ready, order the burger too. Wagyu burger with eggs, avocado on the bottom too, and melty cheese and bacon. 
so juicy with that nice creaminess from the eggs and a delightful crunch from the bacon. I know I'm here for a paella buffet, but no regrets. Even better, dunked a burger in that awesome blue cheese sauce. is ready. Get ready for seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for sure. If they make this into a cologne, like a Chanel number paella or something, I want a bottle. You just smell all that delicious seafood. And again, look at the size of these prawns. Fresh mussels, fresh clams. Look, giant chunk of pork belly. Everything that went in here is made in-house. And just look at that beautiful, glistening golden rice. Mm. Well, that's so good. That is a plate of pure seafood addiction. Rice, beautifully cooked, but still retains a nice, chewy texture. And there is just so much flavor in every single grain. It tastes like a nice umami and fat from the pork belly. Mm. Clam, deliciously sweet. Pork belly. Whoa. How is it? Beyond words. Beautiful. So nice. That poor belly is so tender. In the fresh stock they cook, the chef told me it's uh, usually made with clam juice, but here they freshly make everything. And you can definitely taste the difference. Giant prawns. So sweet and plump. There's also a nice snappiness from the squid as well. I already know their muscles are good. Mm. Look at this pork belly. A piece of pure fat. Mm. Wow. This is a dish I will highly recommend trying if you are ever in Las Vegas. This is unlike any paella I've ever had before. The flavor is just so buttery and rich and deep. Definitely worth the wait. Next round I'm going to, I've been trying to get in every single time I come to Vegas. Never had an opening till today. Let's go dine in hell. Right when you walk in, it's a wall of spoilers. If you don't want to know who won every single season of Hell's Kitchen, don't like at this wall. Always loved the show, always wanted to come here. Of course, when you're here, you gotta get the beef wellington. Can sear scallops with celery root braised bacon lardings. That sounds really good. And they recommended the lobster risotto. The show is actually not filmed here. It's filmed in uh, Caesars Entertainment Studio. That'd be a fun show to be part of. Can seared scallops, some greens, Granny Smith apple bacon.
scallops, really nice sear on the outside, extremely delicate. Red wine reduction sauce, the celery root puree is so creamy and cloud like And it goes perfect with a little sweet tart flavor of the Granny Smith apple. I also got the lobster risotto. This is something else they recommended. Shaved truffle on top, good chunk of lobster tail. I think I like just put in the scallops. The risotto is perfect. Rice is nice and al dente. Flavor is deliciously cheesy and creamy. Combine that with the sweetness of the lobster. Then, add the truffle on top, enhances the earthy flavor of the risotto even more. That makes it some next level stuff. One thing I will say about the scallop stove, I wish the bacon was more crispy. Right now, it just tastes like a limpy piece of bacon. If that was crispy and airy, that would've made this a lot better. I've never had a beef Wellington before, and I am just in awe of its beauty. And part of my ignorance, I didn't know there's so many layers to this. So a golden pastry crust, there's mushroom duck cell, also an herb crepe, all wrapped around a filet mignon. That is perfectly pink. And I forgot, a layer of prosciutto. Look at this, so beautiful. And then dunk it into this red wine demi-glaze. This has been a place I've been wanting to go to for years now. It's so hard to get a reservation. Got lucky this time, I think somebody canceled. That is delicious. The flamey, huh? First of all, so tender. The pastry just kind of crumples and then melts in your mouth and leaves that nice richness from the mushrooms. You can also taste that additional fatty flavor from the prosciutto. Mm. Like I said, I've never had beef volunteer before. I was kind of crushing the pastry. I'm like, why do you need a pastry wrapped around a beautiful piece of steak? But this thing is so toasty and flaky. It's like it's not even there. It just kind of melts into this buttery bliss that works perfectly with the flaming yum. This definitely did not disappoint. It definitely adds more texture, more butteriness, more fun to a typical piece of steak. So I got that three course prefix menu and it comes with a free dessert, toffee cake with ice cream on top. Ooh, wow, this thing is richer than Gordon Ramsay. Very sweet, very decadent, super rich. Oh my goodness. I think three bites of that will have me running up and down the strip. I mean, the cake is really fluffy and nice. This thing is just way too decadent for me. Leave a little piece. I think if I was drinking a Coke right now, after a bite of that, the Coke would just taste like water. That is by far the sweetest dessert I've ever had in my life. Overall though, the staff is super nice. My first beef Wellington experience, pretty darn good. Gonna go work out a little bit and then gonna go for dinner. Final meal of the night at what is rated as the best steakhouse in all of Las Vegas, Carver Steak. And I'm here for one particular dish, the two pound lobster in Coots. Got a steak too. First dish of the night, Wagyu sliders. Thin slices of Wagyu, perfectly medium and rare. A little bit of greens on top. Ace provolone, Mornay sauce. And there's caramelized onions in here as well. All in a deliciously smelling butter roll. That is just ultra decadence in a bite. Deliciously thin slices of Wagyu with all its buttery glory sitting on top of a buttery roll. It's cheesy, it's creamy, a bit of sweetness from the caramelized onions. It's so amazingly juicy as well. Look at that. All that nice beef is gathered on the bottom, soaking into this butter roll. Like I said, pure savory decadence. This is our 42 ounce Wagyu Australian uh, tomahawk. A little nice coating of olive oil. This is going to help ensure that the uh, salt never sticks. Season it very generously. All over.
It's really cool. In the steakhouse, they let you choose your weapon. By weapon, they mean a steak knife. Very appropriate. And this one, Damascus steel. I don't think I've ever used a Damascus steel steak knife before. This is so crazy. Lobster, perfectly cooked pastry on top. Two pound lobster. The lobster meat is chopped up, stuffed back into the lobster itself. And on top, drizzle with red pepper cognac sauce. The puff pastry. Oh. This is such a beautiful looking puff pastry. You just cut into it like a pot pie. Look at how flaky this is. I haven't even been into the lobster. And this is already so good. The pastry, it's super toasty and flaky on top. And right underneath that crust, it's soft, it's buttery. The cognac sauce is delicious. And this thing, when you put it in your mouth, just melts. I'm obsessed over this puff pastry already. Now to try it with the lobster. That is one standout dish. Lobster itself, perfectly sweet. The texture is so bouncy. The flavor, because it's a main lobster, remarkably sweet. The cognac sauce adds a ton of depth, richness, creaminess. It just highlights how sweet that lobster meat is. Because it's so saucy, it goes perfect with that puff pastry. Maybe the best way to eat this, chunk of lobster, put it right on top. Don't waste any of this delicious sauce. Highly recommend. Got my steak, I ordered a domestic Wagyu. Oh, wow. And on the top, this brush with this pink butter. Check out how delicate the steak is. Perfect throughout, deliciously juicy. The juice has already spread and settled all throughout the steak so that I know when I take a bite of this, it's just gonna erupt. That is a perfectly cooked piece of steak. It's so buttery and soft. Every time I chew, more juice splashes onto my tongue. The steak is a domestic Wagyu rib cap. So it has some of the fat of the ribeye and also the lean tenderness of a filet. I love the slight bitter flavor of the char on the outside and the Brussels sprouts, oh my gosh. Made with hot honey, loaded with bacon on top. I really didn't know hot honey could be used on Brussels sprouts. Another use of hot honey I didn't know about. I've been addicted to Brussels sprouts lately. I love roasting them on my own. Usually just some olive oil, garlic, salt and pepper, but hot honey. Deliciously sweet, which kind of takes away from that slight bitterness of the sprouts. A bit of mild heat, and the bacon just adds that extra fatty richness. One other thing I got, another puff pastry dish, but this time bone marrow with short rib on the inside. It's like an upside down mushroom, and you guys can see right here how flaky that pastry is. Beneath that flaky layered pastry. Look at that short rib and fat. Yeah, actually there is some mushrooms in here. And a marrow in here and they give you like a very slender spoon so you can dig into the marrow. Cut into the puff pastry. Whoa! And all that beef juice is just leaking out. And with the short rib, oh my gosh, there's some potatoes, there's some mushrooms. Add that to my little pile. Now I'm gonna dig for some marrow. Add a little bit. It's gonna stick my knife in here actually. Spread that onto the puff pastry.
that's like the most ultimate beef rib pot pie maybe in this universe. You need that beautiful pastry. Loads of melt in your mouth, tender ribs stewed with mushrooms and potatoes. The short rib just melts in your mouth. The pastry on top soaks up some of that delicious beef juice that's on the bottom, forming like a moat around the bone marrow. This is one of those dishes that I don't want to wait for it to cool down. I want it piping hot when it goes in my mouth. Add some of that to my Brussels sprouts. This is just pretty much butter. Mm. Usually you go to a steakhouse, there's a selection of steaks, a selection of seafood, usually a crab cake, but the lobster, the short rib, anything covered under a blanket of pastry. These are some statement dishes. Fun to look at and eat and amazingly delicious. No wonder this place is considered the best steakhouse in Las Vegas. I definitely see why. All right, I'm gonna finish dinner before it gets cold, but as always, I'll place that went to listen down below for you guys. Thank y'all so much for watching. Until we eat again, see you later. A few moments later. In dessert, it's an ice cream sundae. Three different types of ice cream, cookies and cream, vanilla, and salted caramel, some gold macaron. I thought I was pretty full after a day of eating, especially after all that food at dinner. There's always space for ice cream.